Hey, this is Matt Spracklin. Thanks for listening to this. I think you're going to enjoy it. Welcome to a new episode of No Chords But The Truth podcast in association with the British Country Music Festival. This is a podcast where I speak to primarily British country artists. But in this episode, you're going to hear from my favourite honorary British artist, Sarah Darling. And the last time I saw Sarah was at a bar in Nashville just a week or so before the lockdown. So it was great to catch up with everything she's been up to these past couple months and have a bit of a deeper dive into the background of Sarah's music and her passions. It's always fun. It's always a pleasure. Remember to subscribe for future episodes of No Calls But The Truth podcast. But for now, here is Sarah Darling. Sarah, darling, how's it going? So good. I mean, <laughs> in in quarantine terms, I should say. <laughs> yeah, good. right. Well, I was going to um, say, where, where in the world are you and, and how are you surviving the lockdown? I'm in Nashville. Um, it is a particularly gloomy day, but it's it's been beautiful. I think um, the sunshine has really been helping the survival of quarantine at the oh, moment. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you feel that? Because it's been beautiful in the UK, right? Yeah, I was just—I was thinking this earlier on. If it had been raining like, all the time and it's just miserable, it's just it would make it so much worse. But you can get out. Even the sun coming through the windows, it just makes everything better, doesn't it? Exactly, exactly. So I'm I'm surviving. Um, I'm doing a lot of cooking, which is has been fun. So I'm making bread at the moment and doing all <laughs> kinds of crazy things. So. Cool. Yeah, we're definitely going to get to talk to that. I'm going to ask you about your baking. Cool. Later on. Yeah, definitely. Do, do you, how how's it been as an artist in like the, these weird times? It's 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 a conversation I've had with many artists, but everyone's different. Everyone mm. deals with different things, and so as someone who's used to playing loads of shows, used to recording loads, like what are, what have been the benefits and what have been the hardest things in these current times? <laughs> It's such a great, such a great topic right now. Um, I have I have so many thoughts on it. Um, you know, I'll start with the, you know, the most recent thoughts about it. As as time's gone on, I've been re- really reflective because last year was such an awesome year of travel yeah. for me, and I I spent most of my time in the UK, and I you know played some amazing shows and. Um, I just have a lot of compassion for um, artists who were in the middle of an album cycle or have never toured, you know, never had the opportunity to tour. Like I, I've been able to go tour, you know, my own shows and, and experience all that. And for it to just kind of have the rug pulled, it's, uh, you know, I, I definitely feel really grateful. So today I'm, you know, I'm kind of going through this grateful mode. Um, I think when it first started, my brain kind of went into overdrive and I'm like, okay, so, <laughs> you know, I'm sort of like this create, like, you know, the creativity was like swirling like crazy and could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, if that makes sense. So you, you know, you put a lot of pressure on yourself um, to to keep things going. And what I ended up finding was, okay, I love to cook, you know, um, and I love my fans. So it's not the same thing to, to go live. And it's not that one-on-one human connection that we have at a show. And I miss that so much, like that rush. But it's so great that I'm able to do these lives and, and see people and, and how appreciative yeah. uh, the fans are. They're so grateful for just anything that's like, music related right now so what i would say it's all coming in waves matt it's like (laughs) one day i'm fine and the next day i'm like oh my god like i'm what am i doing with my life (laughs) are you right are you writing as well yes i am sporadically so i i've been writing um some zoom co-writes um here and there which has been really cool Um, i was gonna say how does how does that work because presumably a lot of the things you write about are experiences you have in places you go in people you meet in mm. stories that come from that but when there's not much going on how are you drawing that inspiration are you like really deep digging deep i'm t- definitely digging deep i mean it's so interesting the t- just the subject matter that i'm thinking about it's it's actually very much on covid you know 19 related i'm i'm like i don't want to think about 
what we're going through at the moment, which is interesting. It's sort of escapism, I guess. But um, I find that Zoom writing either works immediately or it doesn't. And then if you almost give yourself the grace to say, hey, we can do this in a couple days. So I've um, I wrote this really amazing song with an artist named Mindy Smith. I don't know if you know Mindy, but she's you would love her. You would love her music. But she um, her and I wrote a great song in like two hours, just like on two different days, like right at noon. And we ended up writing a really cool song. So, um, yeah, the subject matters are di- completely different than, you know, what I've been writing in the in the past. Are you finding you getting more time to listen to more music as well? Yes. Because yes. oh, yeah. do you know what's weird? I, 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 literally, as I say that then, I'm like, uh, do you know what? I'm actually not listening to as much music as maybe I do. when I'm walking so around the house. I'm listening to podcasts probably and like YouTube videos and stuff, but yeah. I'm, actually, I'm actually listening to less music. I put an album on this morning. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, this is the first time I've put an album on for ages because if I'm not really? traveling about, yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Isn't it? That is weird. You know, I do think, um, I can kind of agree with that. Like I'm only listening to it when I go out for a walk, which, um, and I'm not listening to anything new. I'm listening to my comforts. Maybe that's it. It's like, you know, I was thinking with podcasts too, they're so comforting. Yeah. Um, you know, subliminally, maybe we're, you know, we're just kind of like, Oh, whatever is comfortable and like feels good, you know? So, um, but yeah, I, I was actually thinking about this morning. I'm like, I want to listen to all my old songs, which was really funny because I hadn't done that yet in quarantine and just go through music that I've written over the last like year and a half. And because, you know, I'm, I was planning on making a record or recording very soon before we, we got like shut down. Yeah. What, what, what was that place we were hanging out in, in Nashville? Oh, Pinewood Social. Oh yeah, that was nice. That's, that doesn't, that seems like a long time ago, but it also doesn't seem that long ago. But what was it? End of March? End of February? End of, wait, like yeah, it was right before all this happened. You were here and yeah. I was so grateful. We had such a great, great chat and like, well, I think I was drinking French 75s maybe. <laughs> it was um, good. Um, yeah, it was really good. Some good food. What, wasn't, what, didn't, you, that, didn't John Party walk out and you said, oh, that's John Party? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know that was him. Yeah. yeah, the cow, the the hat. He has like a certain a certain look. It gave it away for sure. <laughs> and we talked a little bit then about this music. So you, you broach it there. Mm. You, you've got you've got new music ready. You're planning. You were telling me about maybe working with a new producer, a couple of producers you're looking forward to working with. And so how were this was coming towards a new album? Maybe a slightly different sound, something more progressive. Has that sort of developed anymore or yeah so it's so funny because I, I remember us having that conversation right and it was literally like a couple of weeks later and then we're you know we're sort of in a yeah, standstill yeah. um all of those things are still happening um I'm really excited because I have a couple producers um this is sort of a producer team um, I'm not really sure how they want me to announce it yet, but um, <laughs> but what I would say is one is a girl and she's an amazing songwriter in Nashville. Um, I'm recording, you know, I kind of, um, you know, I loved that process of recording Wonderland in the UK because it was such yeah. a, an adventure. Um, yeah. But I am going to record this one here. I don't think I have much choice anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, um, uh, but it's been interesting because... I, you know, I've been sitting with these songs longer now. I've been like thinking about them more, the ones that I was just getting ready to record. And um, I think that's a good thing. You know, sometimes you rush into music and I, I don't have that luxury right now. I'm really thinking about it. And I also think about visually, like how it's a, you know, it's a big sort of package and what it looks like and what it feels like and what are the colors. I think about all those things before... I go in and record. So I'm very like a visual, audio visual type person. Um, but yeah, it's all coming together in my head, which is good. I can't wait to hear it because, you know, you've told me a little bit about the way that's moving and really mm. looking forward to hearing that. But touching on, touching on the UK there, obviously you recorded Wonderland here in the UK. Yeah. Played the British Country Music Festival, the first one ever last year. How was that? Yes. Oh, so good. So oh, it was good. A great and weekend. yeah, and we got to hang out, which was great. Yeah. Um, that was so cool. I loved, um, 
and that was in Blackpool, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Blackpool is, um, I had never been there, and <laughs> I just loved the, uh, yeah, the whole spirit was beautiful, and I, I'm excited to see um, the growth of country music, because, like, in my mind, I think that after this is all over, like, all the country fans in the UK are going to be so amped up oh, yeah. to go to a festival. Yeah. Like, it's going to be so much fun to be part of those, you know, those first few shows that you know we get to play i know it's crazy it's crazy and and maybe for those who don't know as much about the background and your connection with the uk how is that because you are very fondly looked at as you know sort of almost a british artist in a way but only (laughs) only due to the time you spent here and your connections so maybe talk about that a bit i mean i play you on the country hits Brit show because you're not like an adopted country hits Brits to me. I love that. I, I do feel adopted and thank you. You're so sweet for supporting me. And um, it kind of started, um, you know, I'm married to an Englishman. Um, so, you know, when I started coming over to the UK, it was really for holidays and, and to just come visit. And I never thought I'd ever play a show in the UK. It was never even on my radar. And then, I had an opportunity to play C to C and it was maybe six years ago. I can't believe I'm saying that now, six years ago. (laughs) And they said, yes. One of the first ones then was that? Yeah, it was pretty, pretty like early on. And so I was in the big entrance stage and I just fell in love with the whole experience. And then I said to myself, I'm going to keep coming back uh, twice a year. So I, I started building that and then I, you know, the connection, the fans in the UK, are, they're so different than anywhere in the world. And, you know, Why'd people you- always want me to explain that, but it's just, there's like an appreciation for um, just music. And maybe I feel that with my own personal music, there's some, you know, there's a deeper appreciation. Um, and I, I just, you know, artists, we live for that. We love that you know to feel loved and appreciated it's a, it's a different sort of connection i guess it is it is definitely i think you feel that like even just traveling as like a human you know not as in like someone who's going to perform to people but you you connect with different places in, in different ways and different people have their own way of living and that comes through in the way you meet them it's how friendships are formed i guess as well and it must be it's- amazing as an artist to come to a to a country for the first time to play and have that connection because that stayed the whole time. Whenever you play here, it's, it's just, wow. I, I love hearing that. I, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer of that. You know, when I'm up on stage and I feel that love coming from the audience, it's, it's like an amazing, you know, I describe it as like light, you know, kind of just bouncing around the room. It's, you can feel it. I can feel it. The audience feels it. And I just know that, um, you know, I just have to keep, having it you know in my life it's like this beautiful beautiful thing that um has evolved into a you know me being adopted brit which is <laughs> hilarious <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the deal that's the deal so coming back to the social media side of things you have got this amazing connection with your fans you've got a brilliantly loyal fan base and it's growing all the time and i mean wonderland was just such an amazing album and social media has been great for you especially with all like you say latin 2019 was an incredible year for your travels and the festivals you played and stuff so the social media is such an interesting side of things and i've always loved to talk about it and how it affects an artist and how they yeah. deal with it the amount of times they feel they have to post do they post do they go live do they respond to everybody all these sort of things we see the good bits on social media but what are the bad bits what are the hard bits what do you struggle with or do you have no struggles at all i definitely have struggles um with social media i think um you know, and thank you. Cause I think, you know, I love social media for that direct um, connection that I can yeah. have with my fans, you know, on the dark, there's always, there's a dark side for sure. And, and that might just come when, you know, it's just social media can be, you know, it can be like a, a, you know, a, a light on insecurity, you know, all of a sudden you, you know, some people don't think, oh yeah, you know, they're artists, they don't have insecurities, they, they feel fine, you know, they're posting these glamorous pictures. But actually, I think that, you know, we all have insecurities, every single human being. And so I think it's, it puts a glow on insecurity, social media. 
And as well as like when you, you're just not feeling it, you know? I mean, there have been days in quarantine I've been super emotional and had a live set up and I didn't want to go live. And then I did. And I was so glad that I did because I was able to, I felt better. That That's the one thing in quarantine, my fans are actually making me feel better. Really? <laughs> they're, they're, it's sort of like, you're my friends. I need you. <laughs> so. <laughs> but that those insecurities, I guess, are mm. inward are inward because people don't necessarily see those yeah exactly but you're and I'm, you know, I'm not you know we're friends i'm not just saying this but you're one of the like nicest people i know let alone like one of the nicest people in music so do, do those insecurities bring out a bad streak in you <laughs> that you know people don't get to see is that is for that sure yeah no it no i'm glad you did yes it it, it does you know like on my level of um you know, you like, it's so good to admit that you're human and like, you know, and I'm so like, I do, I I consider every time I get to go do something, a gift to be able to connect with people and just say, Hey, like we're all here. Like I, I'm a a lover. I'm a people. I am definitely like on the archetype. I am a lover archetype. Um, but yeah, I think that, you know, when the insecurities pop out, it's mostly bad to myself which is interesting like Mm -hmm. I'm not usually most people don't ever see like that that side it's mostly like it's what I you know I sort of like beat up myself which I I think a lot of people can relate to and so I go quite inward and then say oh I'm gonna beat myself I'm not doing enough or I'm you know that wasn't great you know and sort of have these like little self conversations so it's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, no one wants to jump on social and say how bad everything is or how much they're struggling because then you just feel like you're searching for some sort of, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, like comments. Oh, you're fine. I mean, it's like seeking attention. You don't want to feel that way. It's a, it's a trap. It is a trap. And also everyone is like going through something different each mm. day. So they might read a comment and not get how you were feeling when you wrote that or it's so um it's just really it doesn't it's not a true it it is a connection but it's not a true connection like you and I like I can see your face you know and I can see your eyes and you know we have this podcast going and I I know you're you know you're you are happy and and you just don't know like how people are really feeling and yeah um well I I, before we jumped on I was on Instagram and I saw like it comes up with these clips on the search thing doesn't it on the on the explore part of Instagram and I'm a big Nirvana fan and I saw this clip of Kurt Cobain smashing his guitar up on the stage and I just (laughs) want I sort of wanted to like tweet it saying when you know when when your laptop isn't working or whether you you know you just drop your drink and this is the first I'm gonna just smash everything oh no kidding (laughs) and it's okay like I, I have felt that way in this quarantine process a couple times yeah. so yeah although i don't have any guitars to smash so <laughs> well you got yeah you don't necessarily want to smash them up yeah Talk, when did you start learning guitar when did you start writing music i started um oh gosh a uh, guitar um it was later in life so for me um i started writing poetry as a kid never really understood that that was what I was doing, that I was writing, you know, the, be- you know, beginning parts of writing music. So as a yeah. kid, I'd write a lot of little post-it notes. My mom would find them around the house. And then when I moved to Nashville, um, I met, um, I fell in love with a musician, songwriter, and uh, we had a very tumultuous relationship, but he was a great songwriter. And I just learned a lot from him, wrote all my early heartbreak songs about him. So he's kind of the reason why I started writing songs. <laughs> it's a bit Taylor Swift. But, I was going to say, you're not the first one. Um, to, to, yeah, to I totally that. Taylor Swift, Swifted. Because um, you come from quite a musical background, don't you? We were talking so a bit di- about the sort of gospel links as well, weren't we, at some point? Yeah, so I have gospel music on my grandfather's side. And my dad was a drummer in a band. Oh, cool. Um, sort of a garage traveling band. So I have a lot of music in my family anyway, and uh, a lot of country gospel roots already. And so what made it country? What sort of artists inspired you? What did you, who did you want to be? Uh, funny enough, Shania. Shania really? Twain. Cool. I, lo- I mean, 90s female country, it just 
it was like this amazing to be a, like a, a little girl dreamer, you yeah. know, dreaming and watching 90s female country. It was the best. Martina McBride, Trisha Yearwood. Um, I wanted to be all of them. So that was why. Um, but I just, I loved Shania Twain. I thought she was very innovative and um, she wore leopard print. She wore red lipstick. She was great. So, um, and, and also, you know, as I've gotten older, um, just the, the storytelling aspect is just yeah. so beautiful. It's just a, I love country music for that reason. And you played some big shows. You played the, op- did you play the Opry? You played the Opry. Yes, I've played the Opry um, 90 some times now. 96. 96 times? Yes. Is that cr- <laughs> Like, honestly saying it, it's crazy. There's me, there's me saying, uh, you, should, you played the Opry, and yeah, you played it 96 times. That's, man, I didn't know you played it that many times. Since, I think it's been 20, 2012. That's when That's I debuted. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. It's an amazing place. You played over Brad Paisley once. I did. I did. We actually sang Whiskey Lullaby. No. On the Opry stage. It was sort of an out of body experience. Probably one of my favorite musical experiences ever. That's amazing. It was so cool. It was just cool. How did that come about? I um I went on a reality show um called Rising Star. And Brad Paisley was a judge on Rising Star. So um when I uh left the show, um he's like, Why don't you come play the Opry with me? And he just invited me to come sing with him on the Opry. It was really sweet. And it was the best treat, you know, to be able to, you know, everybody's always sad when they, they leave a, a reality show. In hindsight, I'm so glad that I did not win that show. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was beautiful. And he's such a good guy. He's great. So I'm going to start to round things up and – who knows when we're all going to be able to hang out again and go to shows mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. But what have you got planned? What can you plan? coming up? So as far as planning goes, you know, I actually spoke to uh, my producer last week and he was saying that they're starting to make socially distanced recordings in Nashville. They're trying, mm-hmm. they're trying some things. So that's really promising. I think as far as shows are concerned, I have nothing on the books, which is really sad, you know, to announce that. But, um, you know, we're all in the, all of the artists, we're all in this together. It's, you know, no one is exempt, you know. But is it a good, is it an, not good time, but is it an okay time to have no shows planned because the emphasis is on the new music? So when exactly. that comes out, that is when actually you're going to, you know, hopefully by that time, it should, it, it could line perfectly for you. Exactly. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it and, and earlier in the podcast, that's what I kind of meant about, I feel grateful because I'm in a, that part of the season where I'm creating new music and then I'll go out and tour it sometime whenever we can. But, you know, for me, that's sort of the goal is I'm looking at mid July of trying a social distanced recording. <laughs> so this should be very interesting. And that means, you know, musicians wearing masks, and being in separate places and no lunch, you know, no lunch breaks and presumably all the, not while you're singing. Yeah, no, no masks. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I can't wear a mask and all that. But vocal you, booths, isolation booths, that's what they're there for. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that is a weird thing, isn't it? We had the same thing with the with the radio, even using the stuff like around the mics. You know, do you, how close you want to get to it? It's it's going to be weird because even oh, when we're allowed true. to do things, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to want to. But, you know, it's going to be weird. It will be weird for all of us as we get back to normal. And what and I, I, it's so funny, those words like the new normal and like, yeah. yeah, it's I think the world. I think this, you know, whatever has happened has changed everything forever. And my hope is that we all come out of this better people and yeah, just more passionate about our dreams and and care more about yeah. what we're doing yeah are you, are you playing much of the new music on your live streams i am actually I no am. i am i'm i'm sort of ch- trying out lots of things i mean i'm doing even a lot of covers so i did a, a kate bush cover the other day which was fun um shania and twain shania twain i've got a new single out on campfire sessions so that's been fun and you know that project i never I never intended it going this 
you know, long, but I think in quarantine, it's been so great to, you know, just release, uh, you know, covers that have influenced me over my, you know, over my life. So these are artists that have, you know, inspired me to, to do country music. It's gone deep, isn't it? And like, again, maybe in another world, you wouldn't have had that space to bring all, all of it out, you know, as much as you have on those campfire sessions. It's been a brilliant project. You got many Thank more. you. No, and it's very true. I probably wouldn't have been going this long on it, but um, everyone seems to like it. So I'll keep, I've got, an, I've got some more coming. So <laughs> Good, good. Well, I'm going to round it up in a sec, but I do want to talk about something you hinted on right at the beginning of the chat, and that is your baking. Ooh. Oh, yes. Because like, it's brilliant. It is so good. Like, I, I know live streaming your music is amazing. And some people do it too much. Some people don't do it enough. Some people got the balance just right. But, but there's going to be a point where we're going to need to switch it up. But you've already been doing that. Doing the, these live baking sessions have been amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you know, I started it. So, you know, for me, baking, cooking, um, I'm more of a baker than a cook. It, it's quite therapeutic for me. So I thought, you know, everybody's going live musically and I, I'm doing that too, but let's change it up a bit. And I had this idea to do baking live, which at first, you know, was super nerve wracking. Cause I'm like, what if <laughs> it all goes wrong and then it's live. But you know what I found is, is that, you know, it, it doesn't matter because we're just having a good time and like people find it highly entertaining me like showing what I'm making in the, in the camera. I'm not a professional, not a professional cook, but you will, ha- you will have some good laughs. Um, but it's mostly sweets. Um, and I change it up. So we've, we've done cream puffs. We've, um, what else have we, we've made like so- pop tarts. So I made pop tarts and this week we're making, um, like a vegan dessert. Okay. So I'm, you know, and I'm kind of trying to include everybody. And so my fans, they bake with me and then they'll send in pictures, which is so cute. So I have some people who've been doing it every week since quarantine started, which actually they've, you know, they've said like, it's brought me so much joy. So that's awesome. We need, we need a chocolate one. We need something fully chocolate. Okay. So like really chocolatey, like a volcano molten chocolate cake. Like okay. on, only chocolate. <laughs> Whatever's in it is chocolate. Flourless chocolate cake. <laughs> I'm waiting for that. What's your favorite thing to cook? What's your favorite thing to eat? Because like, I, I know what it's like being over in Nashville. There's so many good places to go out and eat and people yeah. eat out a lot and stuff. But even when, even before lockdown, did you, do you love to cook, home cook food? I do love to home cook. I also love, I love like eating out, especially in Nashville, because we have some great, great places like Pinewood Social that I took you. I think yeah. it's a great place to have food. But um, so if I were to like, this is so funny because it's not anything fancy, but my favorite, my favorite thing ever is actually just making a cheese board and drinking lots of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Very simple. I'm like, and baguette, like bread, bread and uh, butter. It's like the best thing. Bread, cheese. Um, bread and cheese like that could i could live off that for a, uh, for a while i love it even if it's just like sliced bread just chop it up bit of cheese bat, butter crisps ham ham yeah like exactly very continental it's very french i know i know i think i'm i i am very like uh what, what do they call them the frank francophile or, or something like that yeah I'm, i can see you living in like a, a chateau in the french mountains i love this forecast maybe this is where i'm gonna end up matt i'm yeah. going to live in a little chateau a little, little castle and have wine and cheese every day rosé yeah good. you like a rosé oh yeah i'm a big rosé drinker well there you go well we'll make that we'll make that happen <laughs> here on no cause but the truth i love it oh it's been so good to catch up with you it's been so good to catch up with you too. And thanks so much for having me and stay safe. Yep. And yeah, listen to some new music. I will. I'll let you know. Oh, who was that? Who, who, just as I left Nashville, you said I'll check out that artist. Who was it? Because I went and listened to it. It was brilliant, but I've already forgotten who it was. Oh, goodness. I'm trying to remember. But I have been listening to, um, is it Ingrid Andrus? Andrus. I think she's cool. She's cool. Yeah. I love that album. So that's probably my top top listen at the moment your top listen is ingrid andrus and what about uk artists who are you excited about here 
Well, I'm really, I think it's been really fun to watch Twinnie and her career. Uh, I just think she's a lot of fun on social media and just watching her, but also the wandering heart. So I love this new, oh, so do I. new single. Um, you know, it's beautiful. It's called over my body, I believe. Um, yeah, over your body. Yeah. Over your body. Yeah. It's beautiful. And I love those guys. Um, Tara and I actually were in Thailand, uh, on a separate trips and we saw each other in Thailand, uh, <laughs> like right before lockdown. So um, they're great friends of mine. Really excited for them too. All right, good. Well, we'll catch up again soon. Sounds good, Matt. Take care. Thanks for listening to this episode of No Cause But The Truth in association with the British Country Music Festival. We would love it if you subscribe to make sure you never miss an episode and extra love if you'd give us a lovely five-star rating. You can even review the podcast and leave a comment with who you'd like to see on. You can find me on social media at Matt Spracklin. See you next time.